listen don't don't tell my wife i got these out of the closet i mean they're just almost like new just you know but it it, it didn't hurt them well hey there hobby homesteaders welcome back to peace peak we've got an exciting video for you today i'm lucas and we're sharing our hobbies here on 38 acres in eastern kentucky and today we're talking about tractors and lift capacity. Now I've been talking about lift capacity on this Kubota BX for a while now because I'm getting into more and more hobbies that require heavier lifting. In the past, we did an upgrade where we shimmed the hydraulic pressure relief valve and raised the pressure on our tractor, but I never put a number on how much we increased the lift capacity. Today, we're gonna fix that and we're gonna find out how much of a difference it makes. So I'm gonna start out and check and see where my pressure is set right now because it's been a little over a year since I did that. And I wanna see where it's set right now. And I'm gonna back it back down to what it was stock, which was 1,750 PSI. And I think I had it set at 1,950 PSI when I worked on it before. So today when we're finished, I probably will set it right at 2,000 PSI. And we're going to do some tests at those different ranges and find out what a difference it makes. Stay with us. Now, if you are interested in testing your own pressure, or if you want to shim your hydraulic pressure and raise it, you're gonna need one of these gauges and you can get this fluid filled gauge off of Amazon for like 15 bucks. I'll put a link down in the description to that. And you don't have to buy one with the hydraulic coupler on it, especially if you have the backhoe because you can steal a coupler off your backhoe and borrow it to run this test. And that's what I did. I just took the female end and put on my gauge and we're ready to do our test. Now, I have done this in the past and I figured out that the easiest way to run this test is to connect right here on the back to this pressure gauge. If you have a BX18, uh, a 2380 or 2680 or whatever, and you just have a front end loader, you may have to do the test on your front end loader hydraulics if you don't have the rear hydraulics for the backhoe. But if you've got a BX23S, you can just test it right here and we'll see the pressure as soon as we fire this up. Now, because that hose is not hooked up to where the hydraulic fluid can flow in a, in a direct flow, it, you're actually blocking off the flow when you unplug that hose. So you are putting your hydraulic pump under load immediately when you do that. So don't run the tractor for very long that way. To just fire it up, run the throttle up, and check the pressure. That works and gets the job done, and it's quick and easy. <laughs> Now, when you take this out, this is what you get. Your spring with this sealed, this cap with an O-ring on it. You take the spring out and this washer right here is what we added in order to raise our pressure. So we're gonna leave that out and put this back on and check our pressure and see if it's back to stock and then we'll start doing our tests. All right, guys, so baseline, we hooked directly to the back of the truck that's got a load of gravel in it, so there was no picking it up. And we tried several attempts at 3,200 RPMs, stock pressure, 1,750 PSI, and we lifted directly 850 to 870 pounds. All right, guys, so I'm set up to get an official weight, and I wanted to use my bucket, but I wasn't gonna be able to fit enough gravel in the bucket to max out the weight capacity, even at stock. So I got me two barrels on a pallet with my pallet forks on here. We will fill these barrels up with gravel until it can't pick it up anymore, and we'll use that as our standard. Seven. 
We're up to 623 pounds in our barrels on a pallet. Well, we overdid it. 623 pounds of gravel plus the barrels and the pallet is too much. It will just barely get it off the ground and that's it. All right, so we're gonna dip some out. We can and see how much it takes before we can lift it. Let's try this. I'm gonna call that a lift. We got it far enough off the ground you could move it. You could do work with that. So let's weigh it and see how much we got. We had to take 55 pounds off of there. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is pour that bucket back in there. So we're at 623 pounds, and then we're gonna see how much we can add and pick it up with 2000 PSI pressure. We got the washer back in there, so let's get a reset. All right, so we were seeing just over 2,000 PSI when I cranked it up to like 32, 3,300 RPM. So at 3,100 RPMs, it's 2,000 PSI. That's about where I want it. Now, I will tell you the cap on that spring, how hard you tighten it, that it also adds pressure to it. So you want to not just trust the shims, but check your pressure again after you're done because I tightened it a little harder this time and that's why I was getting like 20, 50 PSI or whatever. So just keep that in mind. All right, we got 86 pounds there. So right now we have a, an extra 141 pounds on it over what we lifted with the stock hydraulic pressure. So let's try it out. 3100. We lifted 568 pounds with the stock PSI of 1750, and it lifted this uh, 709 easier than that. So we're gonna put another bucket full in there, be about another 75 or 80 pounds. All right, 76 and a half pounds. So we got 785 in here now. All right, guys, I'm literally gonna put another 15 pounds in here so that we do 800, and I think that's gonna be the mark that we're gonna get with this, so. Fifteen pounds right there. The final results of the actual real world lift test were we lifted 568 pounds of gravel 
inside the two barrels on a pallet on our pallet forks at 1750 psi raising it to 2000 psi we lifted 800 pounds even worth of gravel in our two barrels with the pallet forks i set my rpms at 3100 psi the second time so that i would be right at 2000 psi to give you that baseline so you know what to expect we were able to lift an extra 232 pounds pretty much exactly the same as we did with the stock uh, configuration we got it about six or eight inches off the ground there so pretty even comparison 232 pounds for 250 psi of increase I'm pretty impressed by that. That's, that's real world. This is what we did. I showed you the gauges, I showed you the weights, and that was the difference that it made. Now, what that means for you is, if you increase your hydraulic pressure by 250 PSI to 2000, you're basically overcoming the weight of your pallet forks or your bucket so that you can lift that much extra. My pallet fork setup, my buckets, they're all somewhere right around the 200 pound range. That kind of gives you an idea of the difference. 200 pounds is a lot. I mean, that's, uh, you know, three sacks of concrete or whatever the case may be. I got to go get one more number because we're going to hook back up to the truck after I dump this gravel off. Man, I went through a lot of extra work to, to put this gravel on my son's driveway <laughs> so that I could share this information with you guys. But I'm going to go dump this on his driveway and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to chain to the back of the truck again. And we're going to lift with the increased hydraulic pressure and see what our scales say when we're hooked directly at the Two levers, skid steer, quick attach. Listen, don't don't tell my wife I got these out of the closet. I mean, they're just almost like new. Just, you know, but it, it, it didn't hurt them. All right, guys, well, that was a real fun experiment that shows the real world difference that you get from more hydraulic pressure. Hook to the back of the truck we increased by almost exactly 300 pounds. Now that's pretty much pulling at the pin. So we got 1145 pounds lift at the pins. That's pretty stout considering that this whole setup is rated to lift around 700 pounds at the pin. It's a very capable machine and if you want to take on the risks you can make it even more capable by adding lift shimming your hydraulic pressure. I have another video that better outlines the whole process of shimming your hydraulic pressure. And I'll leave a link to that in the description and I'll tag it at the end of this video so you can check it out. But today's video was about putting a number on it. And we got a real world number and a lift at the pen number to go with it. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video and I really appreciate you watching. Till next time, get outside and enjoy God's creation. It's beautiful out here. Y'all have a good day.